Welcome and welcome back fellow fans of Clash of Clans. Hit that sub button and do me a favor today. Would you go out of your way? I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button on today's video. That's right, the Stone Slammer versus every defense and in-depth footage of the Stone Slammer in action. If you guys would do me that favor, hit the thumbs up. I would be forever grateful and I promise to pay you back. Um... I'll, I'll figure out a way to pay you back. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to talk about the range of the Stone Slammer as it reaches out and touches some walls. So we set up some walls at different distances from defenses. The cannon getting one-shotted, but the maxed out walls not getting one-shotted. Now, here they are at one space away. Now we've moved the walls to two spaces away. And check out as that splash damage hits the walls three tiles away, but if you've got three tiles of spacing between the targeted building and the walls, as in right here, they don't suffer any damage at all. So it's important to see that, and this is definitely one of the ways that we may see bases change in the near future as far as trying to account for a stone slammer moving in. So again, we watch this and we're going to see also that, remember, the Stone Slammer targets defenses, but it's going to do damage to all buildings. It's just going to go after and sit on top of the defenses specifically. So what I went ahead and did is I dropped some builder huts in the corners here. They are within range because they're within those three tiles. And as the Stone Slammer moves over this time, you will see that it will one-shot the cannon and conveniently one shot all of the builder huts in the surrounding area as well now of course it is doing reduced damage to areas nearby like that it's not doing the same damage that it does to the building that it's directly on top of and we can see that right here the cannon has more hit points than a maxed out archer tower a cannon has 1620 the archer towers have only 1330 yet right there you can see they only get slightly damaged. The Builder Huts, of course, go down. But the area damage generated by the Stone Slammer is small enough that it actually has to go out and hunt down each individual defense right there. Not enough splash damage to take out two major defenses with one attack. Now, also important to note, notice that it says damage per second 600. But wait a minute. How is it one-shotting a cannon with over 1,600 hit points? Remember, that is damage per second. The Stone Slammer does not attack once per second, so the damage it's doing is somewhere above 1,600 and somewhere below 2,200. I'm guessing it attacks about every three seconds, probably for roughly 1,800 damage, and we will see that again as we go over every single defense. So we're going to have the Stone Slammer maxed out, level 3, go after a 900 hit point mortar. Goodbye. Easily. Taken out. The 950 hit point Tesla also going down in one shot. And of course we know the 1330 hit point Archer Tower gets obliterated. The 1400 hit point Bomb Tower gets annihilated. And then the 1400 hit point, same as the Bomb Tower Air Defense, is going to become incinerated. And of course, we know that the cannon, we saw that earlier at 1,620 hit points, also gets one-shotted. And then this tree, surprisingly... No, I'm just kidding. We're, we're not going to attack the tree. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the buildings that take more than one strike from the Stone Slammer, beginning with... Okay, well, again, we'll just kind of go over. There goes the cannon. All right, it's out of the way. It's just for continuity's sake. Okay, so one shot of the cannon at 1,620. Wizard Tower, 2,240 takes two shots but very close very close to getting it in one shot so maybe around 2000 damage and then the inferno tower set to multi don't worry we'll come back to single target shortly it also takes two shots expo 3500 hit points at max level and it is just barely going to get taken out in those two blasts and now the eagle artillery 4800 hit points and yes, indeed, it is going to take three. It looks like maybe that third one was only about a half. And then wait a minute. Hey, come back. Come back. Get out this. I'm just kidding. Of course, we know that the 7,500 hit point Town Hall 12 is not a weapon until it's received damage or the base has been damaged to 50%. We will get back to that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and throw in the Stone Slammer against three multi-target Infernos. Check it out. It has so many hit points 
that even three multi-targeting Infernos cannot stop this bad boy. In fact, it only gets about 45% damage done to it. Of course, the story is completely different when attacking a single target Inferno, and we drop this at a distance, and you will notice by the time it gets there, that single target Inferno has ramped up, and the Stone Slammer is out of here. Of course, its payload can take it out, but the Stone Slammer from a distance cannot single-handedly take out a single target Inferno, but what if we drop it right about on top of it? Now, this is not really practical. It's not going to be very accessible in the game to get to a single target Inferno like that, dropping the Stone Slammer right on top and getting it out of the way immediately before that beam can accelerate. But let's think, is there another way to do this? I don't know. How about if we tried using the bad spell? I mean, I mean the bat spell. There it is. The bat spell goes down. The bat spell distracts the single target Inferno. Now the Stone Slammer gets in there and the Stone Slammer does its job. Huh. What do you know? All you people that say the bat spell is the bad spell? Maybe. It's not quite as bad as everyone first thought. Gotta give it a chance. Once the update goes live, I'm sure there will be more and more uses for it in the game. All right, moving on to a maxed out Town Hall 12 level 5 Giga Tesla. Important to do as little damage as possible. We want to see a true one on one confrontation as the Stone Slammer goes after the Giga Tesla, the Town Hall 12. There is the second blow. Third blow, not quite going to do it, but the fourth and final rock takes it out. And the Giga Tesla bomb, the Giga Bomb, leaves that Stone Slammer at over half health on its way to go wreak havoc somewhere else after other defenses. So truly strong, truly high in hit points. I'm telling you, it is it is a powerful, powerful new Siege Machine. Now, what I wanted to do was answer some comments, talk about some things. So let's throw up a Noah's Ark attack. Now, we're going to go ahead and change the extended deployment bar that we talked about in yesterday's video and check that out. All right. Those of you using massive army compositions like Noah's Ark, now you could get all of your units, or almost all of them. I have so many units that it, it still extends off the edge. We're going to go ahead and attack this Town Hall 11. Try to grab a three-star with Noah's Ark while we talk about some of these comments. First of all, I have to apologize for the interruption in yesterday's video. It was not intentional, and no, it was not my wife. A uh, Gala Wife uh, is not quite so disruptive. That was Peter $17, and I promise to try to keep him out of the future videos uh, as best I can. It's also exciting to see more players getting excited about the update. An awesome update will really change the meta of the game and attack and base strategies. But what I loved most is the Grand Warden and Siege selections available mid-attack. A great quality of life addition. Badly needed. I completely agree. Tech Freak says, so basically Clash is coming back into its form. The update sneak peeks look great every day. Hope we get more. Well, stick around. And like I said earlier, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. All right, Mark says, so I guess this news is rock solid, uh, referring probably to the many rock puns at the beginning of yesterday's video. Tell you what, how many rock puns did you hear in the first 45 seconds of yesterday's video? There were actually six, not five. See if you can pick up on all of them. And then a flipping stick of butter wonders why there are not more updates for Town Hall 9. I did talk about this in a recent video. I feel like most of the content that's new for Town Hall 9 is Town Hall 10. It's the gentle way of encouraging you to level up your Town Hall and unlock more and awesome content. This next viewer says sarcastically, ground attacking will get some love, so here you go, a new air siege machine and a bat spell. Well, two points to make here. All right, first of all, the reply. Yes, the air siege machine does open up walls extremely effectively. And number two, the update is not likely going to be tomorrow. Stick around, you never know. There could be more information. I'm not promising anything, but stay subscribed. Jeremy says, when you show the Stone Slammer versus defenses in the next video, can you show it versus an activated Town Hall 12? Well, you're welcome. And yes, it is super strong. This next viewer asking about the Brash Brawlers clan. And remember, you guys, this is the developer build, so it's not live in the game. And any of the numbers that get shown in these videos could change before the update drops, which also answers this last question from Hayden. Why is it that they have to keep the update date a secret? 
because you never know when they might make last minute changes and things will get delayed by a day. They don't want to make promises that they can't keep. Thank you guys again, as always, for sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, hit that like button before you leave. Have a fantastic rest of your day and please do come back again tomorrow for more full attacks. Who's there, Peter? That's what she said. What? Peter, that makes no sense <laughs> at all.